God be the glory. We should turn to the book of Joel, in chapter 2. In verse 28, would you read it with me? And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my what? Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Now understand something. God is talking about an event where he was going to begin to pour out his spirit. In other words, it was a avenue of reconciliation. It was, a, it was a way that God was going to reconcile his people to himself. You know, first God had to forgive us for what man did before man could ask for forgiveness. Amen? So God was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, and it's still going on right now. And, and we know since the day of Pentecost it's been going on. Amen? Now, I want to talk about the function and receiving of the Holy Spirit, and it's something that we've got to get a little bit of understanding to so that we can not only get more understanding of it, but be able to teach it, preach it, and lead someone else into the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It is important. In fact, it is a command from God that every one of his believers be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's only the spirit of error and the powers of darkness that try to prevent people from getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Okay, let's go a little bit further on this. And um, Two gifts that God truly gave us, and if you'll turn to John chapter 3 and verse 16, a famous scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have what? Everlasting, Everlasting life. life. So the first gift um, that God was sending us was salvation, wasn't he? And it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So the first gift that God granted me and you was salvation. That is a gift. That means you have a choice. How many times do people toss salvation away. That foolish preaching that says one saved always saved is so full of baloney. Not that there's not an unbeliever in hell. Every one of them that's in there is a believer, right? Yeah. Amen? But it's too late. <laughs> but that foolishness of one saved always saved, and we have a teaching on that backing up all the scriptures. Far be it that you think you can go out and serve the devil and go to heaven. Don't work that way. Amen? So the first gift that God grants me and you is salvation. The second gift he grants me and you, if you'll turn to the book of Acts, in chapter 2, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for what? The remission of sins. Now stop. So he says here, here's the gift of salvation first. Remember, the blood always goes first. Repentance is a representation of confessing sin. When you confess your sins, the blood of Jesus is activated. The blood goes before the Spirit. So here, we see that Peter said to him, listen, you need to repent for the remission of sin. Amen? Amen. Then he says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is an additional gift. Does everybody got it? Amen. Hallelujah. So these are two gifts. So do, does everybody get baptized in the Holy Ghost? No. no. But now look at the next verse. For the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. But it is a promise, isn't it? It is a promise from God that you would be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Let me share with you three things that prevent you from getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. Unconfessed sin is the first one. The second one is traditions of men. In other words, things that were taught down the line that were out of a man's spirit, not the Holy Spirit. Those are called traditions of men. And the third thing is unbelief. Now you've got to understand, it's our responsibility also to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why many people backslide, because they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. So they seek the ways of the world to give fulfillment. Hallelujah. Go to Matthew 3. Matthew 3 and verse 11. And this is John the Baptist speaking. He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, who is he talking about? Jesus. Jesus. He's the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. No man is the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. You can't baptize somebody else in the Holy Ghost. The only thing you can do is pray the Holy Spirit, 
Hello? You can pray. You can ask the Lord to baptize someone in the Holy Ghost, but no man can baptize another man in the Holy Ghost. It's only the Spirit of God that comes out of this vessel, and it's by Jesus' choice that he baptizes you in the Holy Ghost. Everybody got it? Now let's go back to the beginning here. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. It is not only a gift to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, it is an honor to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Genesis chapter 2. Praise God. So the two gifts that were granted to me and you is salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Three things that prevent us from getting baptized in the Holy Spirit is unconfessed sin, traditions of men, and unbelief. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So he breathed in him. You got to understand it. He took dust. What was the dust made of? His word. His word is what made all the matter. And then he took his word and he breathed in it and it became life. Does everybody understand that? Now, <clears throat> the word spirit means breath, doesn't it? Right? So the Holy Spirit is the breath of God. He's the presence of God. And he's a mentor sent by God. Let me repeat that. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. He is the presence of God. He is the mentor sent by God. And He is God. The Bible says in Acts 17.28, if you want to just write this down, we live and have our being in God. <clears throat> Acts 17.28, we live and have our being in God. You know, you know we, we, we get so um, caught up in everything that we lose sight. You know where electricity came from? God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know where the wind comes from? God. If you ever do this and you feel something, right? Come on, everybody make a wave here. You feel something? Hallelujah. If nothing wasn't there, you wouldn't feel it, would you? All right? So that means you're in God. Do you understand that? You're in God. We live and have our being in God. We're like a big aquarium. It's called the universe. Hallelujah. <laughs> Now, in Zechariah, I want you to write this down, 4, chapter 4 and verse 6, Zechariah 4, 6, the Bible says, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So everything is done by the spirit of the Lord, because God is spirit. Let's go to Acts chapter 1, the function and receiving of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1, in verse 4. Now, Jesus was assembled with his disciples, and, and being assembled together with them, he what? He what? Commanded. Say it again. Commanded. Was that a asking or was that a command from God? Command. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he what? Commanded. Come on, everybody say it. Commanded. Commanded. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. What promise was that? The Holy Spirit. You know how many times people don't wait? They receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and they leave Jerusalem. That's what the devil wants you to do. You know how many people now you got to understand something. Listen there was 380 individuals, disciples of the Lord and the day that they had the feast when the Lord told them to wait. Right? And he's saying here wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father which I had which you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Let me share with you. He told these the 380 of his disciples. You know how many of them went to the upper room and how many went to the feast instead? 120. That's right. So 120 went to the upper room, didn't they? Actually, there was 400 disciples. Excuse me. I think there was 400 disciples. I forgot what it was. I think there was 400. Somebody had 380, whatever. But anyways, only 120 of them Went, out, went to the upper room. And the rest went to the religious ritual and missed God. Hello. But it says it was a command from God, wasn't it? Now look at verse 8. What is it going to say? Verse 8. It says, but what? You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Maybe it was 500 disciples. I forgot. 
But anyways, only 100 showed up. 120 showed up. So he said, listen, it's very important. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, let me tell you, two results of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Power and witness. Two results of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is power and witness. Glory to God. What do you, what do you think he empowers us for? What power, he, he empowers us to be a what? Witness. Okay. He empowers you to walk in the Spirit. He empowers you to overcome temptation. To preach the gospel. He empowers you with the gifts of the Spirit. He empowers you to fulfill an office. I'll repeat some of these. He empowers you to do the will of God. Or you can buy the tape. He empowers you to cast out demons and unclean spirits. He empowers you to get revelation, knowledge, and mysteries of God. And He empowers you to pray. And there's many more. But let me repeat some of them. Walk in the Spirit. Gifts of the Spirit. Overcome temptation. Preach the gospel. He also convicts you of hidden sin if you're listening. He gives you boldness and authority, doesn't he? He empowers you to do the will of God. Cast out devils. Power over darkness. Revelation knowledge and mysteries of God. And a gazillion more. These are empowerments of the Holy Spirit. How many of y'all think you need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you understand the difference? Let me share something else with you. What... It, what what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a representation of. First of all, he's the connector between the spirit realm and the natural realm. Without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you won't be able to walk on the other side. You know what you'll be fed by? Knowledge. You'll be fed by knowledge, but it won't be truth. That's why it's so important to get filled with the Holy Ghost. People seek knowledge now instead of God's presence. Don't, don't get me wrong, knowledge is important, isn't it? Because knowledge represents truth, doesn't it? But without God's presence, without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you won't get understanding, will you? Because he's the author of the Bible, isn't he? He's the one that wrote it. Oh, hallelujah. He's the one that brings birth. He's the one that makes you a new man. That's what God said. Jesus told us that he would seal us with the Holy Spirit as a guarantee of a down payment, awaiting our full redemption. That's why the devil doesn't want you to have relationship or fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. He likes to bind people in bondage. Remember, the Word of God is known as the tutor. And the Holy Spirit is the mentor. Say it again. The Word of God is the what? Tutor. tutor. And the Holy Spirit is the mentor. mentor. Oh, to God be the glory. Praise you, Lord. Go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 and verse 36. Acts 10, verse 36. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching the peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all that you would know. The word that you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God what? Anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit. That means the Holy Spirit was upon him. If you've ever taken a screwdriver with a screw, right, you, you fool with it enough times, a magnetic, again, it's called anointing because you rubbed enough. The more you take time with God, the more anointing's on you. The more you dance with Jesus, the more anointing's on you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. power. Why? So he could be a witness, right? Who went about doing good. Holy Spirit causes you to do good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. That's our job. Holy Ghost wasn't just giving you to give goosebumps and put them on the shelf. He was in, you were empowered with the Holy Spirit to be a witness, a sign, and wonder. Amen? Praise God. <clears throat> Would you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 4? 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 4. Would you read it with me? And we have such trust through Christ our God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. So the ministry of the new covenant is by who? The Holy Spirit. 
But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Go to verse 16. Would you read it with me? 16 and 17. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. What veil? The scales. In other words, this, he's, now he's talking about the Lord. He's talking about when someone turns to the Lord and is baptized in his spirit. Because look at Look at the next verse. What does it say? Now the Lord is the Spirit. Say it again. Now the Lord is the Spirit. One more time. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. Freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from bondage of the world and the entanglements. Freedom from worry and fear. Freedom. The Bible says God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but power. Well, where would the power come from? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> power, love, and sound mind. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. Power, love, and sound mind. How many of y'all think the baptism of the Holy Spirit is important? Amen. Amen. It's a command. Amen. It's not only just important, it's a command. Come on, you got to think about this. What do you think the... The disciples were, I mean, when the Lord said, come on, all right, uh, I want you to wait here. I mean, they saw Jesus, didn't they? They walked with him. They saw him, signs and wonders and miracles and all kinds of things happening. But Jesus still commanded them not to go out and preach. He said, don't go without me. Hello, don't leave home without him. And then... Until what? Till they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Why? Jesus was baptized with the Holy Ghost. In fact, he didn't do any signs and wonders until he, the Holy Spirit came upon him. In fact, if you realize something, there was something very significant. Because when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus, the Father said, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit brings relationship with your Father. The baptism of the Holy Spirit opens the door of relationship with your Father. And let me show you where we can go for that. Uh, go to Galatians 4. So the Holy Spirit brings sonship. Galatians chapter 4. Come on, we shouldn't worship the Lord. We shouldn't stand in His presence. Gee, thanks, Dad, for what you did for me. Let me just sit here and... Uh... Yeah. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 4. Praise God. In verse 6, would you read it with me? And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. The word Abba means Daddy. That's a relationship. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Woo! For then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not God. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? So even though you get baptized with the Holy Spirit, you still have a choice. You can go back to bondage, or you can walk in freedom. The Word tells us, those who thirst and hunger for His righteousness shall be filled. One of the things the devil wants to put in us is complacency, yeah. compromise, yeah. laziness, woe is me. Yeah. Sometimes he doesn't want you to look behind yourself. He doesn't want you to be hungry for the things of God. He wants you to get you hungry again for the things of the world. 
In fact, the word tells us if you're not hot, he's going to vomit you out of his mouth. He said it would be better for you to be cold than lukewarm. And that's a book of Revelation. So it's our responsibility to stir ourselves up and get filled with the Holy Spirit every day. Every day. It's our responsibility to seek God and to get filled with the Spirit. Amen? Amen. You know, when you take a glass of water and fill it up to the top, nothing else can get, can get in. How many of y'all know a devil wants you? He wants his home. He wants you. You're on the most wanted list. You want a dead or alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we know that it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Bible tells us, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Or is it chapter 5? Eh, I think it's chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, huh? Yeah. Praise God. In verse 16. Would you read it with me? Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Well, now that's powerful, isn't it? You know why? Because we're, it's not the ministry of Jesus. It's a ministry of the Spirit. Jesus was the bridge and the, and the mediator to fulfill the Old Testament and bring truth and turn it over to the Holy Ghost. You're no longer... Not, now, don't get me wrong, but He left His name for us, didn't He? He left His blood for us. He left the weapons of God. But if you look at Jesus now, He don't look like no Jew. He fiery eyes, woolen hair, double-edged sword coming out of his mouth. That don't look like nobody on earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's our king. He's our king now. He's our priest. He's no longer Jesus. He left his name for me and you. It is now the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says, don't acknowledge him no more in the flesh. What's he want to be acknowledged of? In the Spirit. <laughs> now look at verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, which means baptized in the Holy Ghost, because the word Christ means anointed one, he is a what? New He's a new creation. Praise God. Why? Because old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now it's our responsibility to stay filled with the Spirit of God so everything is becoming new. And you're not going back to the old. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Everybody all right? You getting it? Amen. Hallelujah. Go to Titus chapter 3. Who doesn't want you to have fellowship with the Holy Ghost? Amen. Powers of darkness. That's why the Bible warns us that Satan comes as an angel of light and righteous ministers. Hello? Believe me, I run across many of them. And these are people that love Jesus. They just don't know that the spirit of error is hindering them and preventing people from getting free by the power of the Holy Ghost. They bring them into bondage, not telling them the complete truth. Amen? <clears throat> That's right. They're preaching the same gospel, but another Jesus. They use that scripture that, well, um, uh, what is it? That, uh, well, love, uh, love lasts forever, but uh, there'll be a time when tongues, in other words, tongues will cease, prophecies will cease, gifts will cease. Well, that's talking about when Jesus comes to the earth. Not talking about now. God's word is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and he doesn't change. It's man's tradition that changes. You know that when, during the dark ages, if you spoke in tongues, you were killed. 
the Catholic Church would kill you. Why? Because they were religious then. When Constantine got in office and everything, he polluted. He joined a Christianity and a pagan worship together. That's why you've got holidays. All, the, all of your days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they're all named after pagan gods. The moon god, the sun god, and so forth. Monday, Tuesday, every one of them is named after a pagan god. <laughs> That's how the Satan works, doesn't he? If you looked at a dollar bill, it has a pyramid, doesn't it? And it has a one eye, doesn't it? That's called the sun god. Everybody get it? It's even on your dollar bill. In fact, around it in Greek or Latin, I think it is, in Latin it says in um, One World Order. Yeah, and God you trust on the top, but it has a false God, doesn't it? Right, and then underneath it says One World Order. That's on your dollar bill. Look at it sometime if you have one. Praise God, and if you don't, you'll get one. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's coming. <laughs> He's faithful. <laughs> Glory to God. Where did I say to go? Titus? Titus 3. Good. Chapter 3. Okay. <laughs> In verse 1. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various laws and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hate, hateful, and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through what? The washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. He's the one that renews you. Whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So the Holy Spirit is involved in our regeneration, isn't he? Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Would you turn to Isaiah 11? Now, we just talked about empowerments of the Holy Spirit. I want to share with you the sevenfold of the Holy Spirit or seven characters of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 11. Praise be to God. Isaiah chapter 11. And verse 1 and 2. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, which was David's father, King David, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Hallelujah. Come on, tell me the first one. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now listen to this. There are seven, this is the sevenfold of the Holy Spirit, seven characters, seven expressions of God's character by His Spirit given to man. So that you and I can not only walk in the Spirit, but understand the things of the Spirit. He's called the Spirit of the Lord. Now, in the Old Testament, individuals, no one had the fullness of the Spirit. In other words, David had the, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Amen. And the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, well, the Spirit of wisdom was on Solomon, wasn't it? The Spirit of understanding was on Daniel. So if you go through the Old Testament, you'll find that individual ones had this character. But for me and you, when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, we have them all. <coughs> Every single one of them. If you're willing to utilize what's been given to you. The Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the 
fear of the Lord or reverence to God. Let me share something with you. You become a worshiper when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You become a worshiper when you're really baptized in the Holy Ghost. But don't put the fire out, man. Don't put the fire out by sitting down. Don't put the fire out. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we see these are the seven characteristics or the sevenfold of the Holy Spirit that came through Jesus for me and you. Amen? Praise God. Okay. Let's go a little further. Let's go to the book of Luke. Brother Luke, a doctor. Man, did he get his socks blown off? Amen? <laughs> he went from clinical to spiritual <laughs> real quick. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4. Go to verse 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted forty days by the devil. Ha! That's why we send people to the labor pool. We send you back to the pit. Why? So you can know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you'll always run from Him. You go to the pit and being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing, and afterward when they had ended, he was hungry. And of course, the devil tempted him, didn't he? Amen? Now, Understand this. Go to verse 13. Of course, Jesus kicked butt down the devil. Right? You can't fight the devil without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You'll lose. You won't be able to discern. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, the devil knows it. And if you're not filled that day, he knows it too. That's why he comes at you real strong in a daze. You're off key. He knows it. He can see it. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 4 verse 13. Let's read it. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until a what? Opportune time. Hallelujah. Well, everybody thinks, well, let's see, I, I overcame temptation. Yeah, okay. All right, it's over with. Praise God. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and it was his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place. He found the place. He went to the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year to the Lord. So understand something. The first preaching Jesus did when he went to the synagogue is he was introducing everybody to the Holy Ghost. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen? And he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down, and the eyes of everyone was fixed upon him. And he began to say to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Man, did that cause an uprising. They wanted to throw him off a cliff. That same cliff they were going to throw him off of is the place where Armageddon's going to be. Whoa. 
Amen? So it's our responsibility to stay filled with the Holy Spirit, isn't it? All praise be to God. Let's, let's go a little bit deeper here now. Hallelujah. Go to uh, John uh, 16. Yeah, John 16. In verse 7, John 16 and verse 7. Would you read it with me, please? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Who are they talking about? Holy Spirit. So it was important that Jesus left. Amen? <clears throat> And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Why not? They didn't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, did they? That's why some of us still don't understand a lot of the things of the Spirit. Because we're not willing to walk in the Spirit. That makes a conscious effort. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. The next thing you know, the scriptures have been opened to you and you begin to understand what Jesus is saying in his word. All of a sudden, all the dots get connected. Bam, 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 bam. And it's like, whoa, give me some food. And then you want to eat. You want to eat. You know why? Because now the Holy Ghost is helping you feed. The Holy Spirit digests the Word for you to eat. When the Lord started this ministry, He said, I'm going to give, I'm not going to feed milk. I'm going to put meat in a bottle. Because the Holy Spirit would do the digesting. So we're getting meat in a bottle. So, However, when He, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you what? Things to come. I'm telling you, if we'd walk in the Spirit more and listen more, we wouldn't get in so much trouble. If we were truly, really walking and listening, we wouldn't marry people, we wouldn't get certain jobs, we wouldn't do certain things if we were really listening and walking in the Spirit. Amen? And we'd be real careful what we said. <laughs> what car we buy? Right, Ma. And all kinds of other things. Oh, you can pray in the Spirit and not listen, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Well, if you're not listening, how are you going to get it? <laughs> All things that the Father has are mine, therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. That's the importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? So you've got to have fellowship in the Spirit. Hallelujah. But you've got to listen, don't you? <laughs> Go to Mark 16. 16, 16. Hallelujah. Jesus told them, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Now listen. I truly don't believe he was talking about the baptism of water. Because signs and wonders don't usually follow the baptism of water. Do you understand that? Amen. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Now listen, because the next verse says, And these signs will follow those who what? Believe. believe, which means to follow. So if you're truly following Jesus, you're going to wait for the dove to come upon you. <laughs> and in my name they will what? Cast out, Cast out demons. Amen. And they will what? Speak with new tongues. Whoa. 
And that doesn't mean that you're going to go learn another language by going to college. That means you get a new language. That's one of the fruits of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's one of the evidences. is a new tongue. Amen? And they will speak with new tongues. Praise God. Now, was that for just then or for now? That's amazing. You know, I didn't even know about this stuff. I called on Jesus. He showed up, baptized me in the Holy Ghost, and I got a whole new language. I tried to go tell a preacher what happened to me. He tried to beat me down. He, he, and I was a baby in Christ. He threw every scripture at me to try and deny what happened to me. And nobody was going to tell me what happened to me. I knew. I knew what happened to me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Nobody was going to tell me that there was no power of God. Nobody was going to tell me that no serpent came out of me and that our fight isn't against Satan in his darkness. Nobody's going to tell me you can't cast out a devil or pray in tongues and have a relationship with your Heavenly Father and the Spirit. Nobody's going to try and convince me. They may try, but they never will convince me. I mean, I had preachers try to tell me it was an illusion. They tried to tell me it was a... Uh, an effect from when I used to yeah. do drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was months afterwards. And I saw this huge shadow behind one of them. I asked the Lord, Lord, should I cast it out? He said, you better not. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Praise be to God. These signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out devils and speak with new tongues. They will know their father as daddy. They will have a relationship. They won't be so concerned about religiosity, rules, and regulations. They will be walking in them without being concerned about them. Because their main concern will be a relationship and pleasing the father. I think some people have not truly gotten baptized in the Holy Spirit. They try to pretend they have, yes. but they haven't. You know why? Because you'll know them by their fruit. If they're fruits of other spirits, then you know. <laughs> you'll know. They'll bear fruits of the Spirit, won't they? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Go to John 14. Scare those religious demons out of here. Man, there ain't enough tape, enough time on this tape to go all the way. <laughs> but we're going to get what we need to get in here. <laughs> we're just going to, we're going to put a little uh, grenade here. Praise be to God. John 14. You must desire the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You must desire to stay filled. You cannot be content to where you are. Hallelujah. In verse five, 15. Chapter 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. How is he going to come? By his Spirit. Amen. By His Spirit. Oh, to God be the glory. Spirit of truth and spirit of error. Two different things, isn't there? Praise God. Um, I want to go somewhere. Let's go to Exodus. Chapter 40. Exodus chapter 40. Who don't want you to pray in the Holy Ghost? That's 
right. Exodus chapter 40. In verse 33, Old Testament about the tabernacle of God. And he raised up the court all around the tabernacle and the altar and hung up the screen of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Hallelujah. Then a cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all of their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, they did not journey till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was above the tabernacle by day, and fire was over it by night in the sight of all the, all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. So the tabernacle had a cloud over it by day and fire over it by night. When it went up and moved, the people began to be led by the cloud. Or led by the what? Spirit. And those who are led by the Spirit are called what? Sons of God. Ooh. Why? Because now we're in the ministry of the Spirit of the New Covenant, aren't we? So do you understand, those who are led by the Spirit are known as sons of God. That's why it's important that you and I be led by the Spirit. That we can maintain that relationship as sons of God. Amen? Amen. Go to Acts chapter 2. It's just for you. Yeah, you know, I still think there was 500 of those disciples. <laughs> I think 380 of them missed it. <laughs> and 100 of them, 20, 120 made it. Yeah. Hallelujah. In verse 1, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound of heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then a then there appeared to them what? Divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Wow. You know what happened? They became the tabernacle. Amen. They became the tabernacle of God. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Woo-hoo-wee! They began to speak to their Father. They became the tabernacle of God. Amen? They became the tabernacle of God. Oh, to God be the glory. Now would you turn to Acts 19 with me, please? So many people believe that uh, you get baptized in the Holy Spirit when you get baptized in water. Now I'm not saying that can't happen. Or that they say that uh, you get baptized in the Holy Spirit when you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I'm not saying that can't happen because it happened with me. But the majority of the time it doesn't. Acts chapter 19. I know it took my wife a couple months to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Believe me, I was praying it would happen soon. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but praise God, I had a prayer closet. <laughs> Bring my blankie and pillow in there. <laughs> 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 but I won't go so bubble. <laughs> Pray it, honey, I'm praying. Praise God. Thank God. Acts chapter 19, starting in verse 1. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. What's a disciple? A follower of Jesus Christ, right? One who's being learned. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? In other words, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Amen? Amen? Amen. What'd they say? No. We have not so much as heard whether there's a Holy Spirit. So what were they doing? Traditions of men. They didn't even know about a Holy Spirit, did they? So did they get baptized in the Holy Spirit when they received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? No. 
They didn't know about it. They didn't believe in it. They didn't know, you know what I'm saying? So what happened? And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? And so they said, into John's baptism. Paul made the famous remark, which needs to be highlighted. John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. That means they what? Got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Just like what happened to Paul happened to them. Just like what happened to them in the upper room happened to them. Has everybody got it? So there are many believers to this day that don't believe that you need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. And they're still getting fulfillment of the world. They're called carnal believers. Carnal. They don't desire the spiritual things. They desire knowledge. Signs and wonders will follow you. As you walk in the Spirit, one of them is tongues. It's a sign to the lost, isn't it? The other one is casting out devils. Another one is power over dominion. I mean, over darkness and temptation. That's if you're walking in the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So you and I are now the what? We are the tabernacle of God, aren't we? Praise be to God. Okay. Would you turn to First Corinthians chapter twelve? So we have empowerments, we have the sevenfold of the Holy Spirit, wonderful functions. Wonderful. Hallelujah. And verse one now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant or boneheaded or stupid. Amen. In other words, I want you to know the truth. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols however you were led. What was he talking about? Fables. Traditions of men. I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be blinded of the spiritual gifts. That's another thing that the Holy Spirit grants me and you. The word gifts means tools. It means tools. Gifts are tools. If you don't go out with the right tools, you're not going to be able to do the right job. Hallelujah. In verse 7. Now, I want you to understand something that because somebody hasn't been baptized in the Holy Spirit does not prevent them from going to heaven. Do you understand that? But the baptism in the Holy Spirit will manifest the kingdom of God in an individual's life. Because the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not food nor drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. That's what's one of the important things about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told a, a, a Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee, you need to be born again. Born of water and born of spirit. Amen? Born of water means repentance. The baptism of John, right? Which was repentance. Born of the Spirit means the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I had somebody tell me, well, that means uh, that you were uh, coming to the world by water when you, the woman bur broke her water. And then you come into the natural realm and then you receive Jesus Christ and that's born of the Spirit. I said, no way. No way. That's carnal. And we were at a feed out and people were preaching this. I was like, man. So they asked, they asked my opinion. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I shared with them what my opinion was. The word water means repentance. The word spirit means the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Where are we going? Oh, okay. In verse 7. 
but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. Now listen, he's not saying that one individual is going to walk in the word of wisdom the rest of their life. He is labeling the gifts of the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. If you got baptized in the Holy Spirit, all these are available, right? It's through the same Spirit. Far be it that you're going to walk by somebody who's dead and say, I only can pray in tongues and not lay hands on them. And to another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. By the same Spirit, by the same Spirit, by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. And to another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit, one and the same Spirit, one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. So as the Holy Spirit quickens you, to manifest in this gift, you just yield to the Holy Ghost and He does it. You are the steward of the gifts. You can choose to pray in tongues anytime you want. You can choose to cast out a devil anytime you want. You can choose to prophesy anytime you want. Man, don't look so dead. You got to be thankful. Let me ask you this. When's the last time you cast out a devil? Especially off yourself. Amen? When's the last time you took 30 or 40 minutes and prayed in the Holy Ghost? Well, I'm too tired. That's right. You're dry bones. You're dry bones, man. Devil, let me tell you, when you dry, neon lights come on. They say, vacant. Listen. The Bible says that the devil... Leaves an individual and seeks dry ground. Amen? Man, you need to worship and get off your blessed assurance when it's time to worship because those demons are seeking somebody who's dry. And if you got some carrying you, you know where they're going to your neighbor. Hello? And people wonder why they have struggles. You know why? They don't discern the things of the Spirit. They don't understand. You know what they get fulfilled on? Money. They get fulfilled on success and what their accomplishments are instead of getting fulfilled in God's presence. That's the difference between religion and relationship. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise be to God. Let's go uh, somewhere else now. Since we've uh, hit that a little bit. <laughs> So we want to desire spiritual gifts, don't we? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Oh, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Then we'll go to 3. Verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Right? So you love him. That means you seek Him. That means you follow Him. That means you obey Him. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Well, how are you going to know the plan without getting in the Spirit? You're going to, count, you're going to follow somebody else's plan? Hello. Now, God puts people with the same vision, doesn't He? Amen. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So you're not going to get the deep things of God without getting in the Spirit. And you're not going to do it without getting baptized in the Holy Spirit and getting filled with the Spirit. And one of the re ways you search the deep things of God is by praying in tongues, because it brings revelation knowledge. So many people ask me, how did you learn this stuff? Praying in the Spirit? Paul said, I wish you all prayed as much as I did in the Holy Ghost. And look how much Paul wrote. Listen, you want direction for your life, start praying in the Holy Ghost. You can't guess it. You need to have direction. Faith comes by hearing. Hello? 
You don't want to assume because you're going, you'll, you'll step into a, a trap. Many people assume. You kidding? They get so pushed, they are in the flesh, they just want to feed the flesh, they don't care what's what, they can't receive counsel, correction, or direction. They just want to feed the flesh. See, praying in the Spirit mortifies your flesh. Mortifies it. Causes your spirit to take dominion over your flesh. In verse 11, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Hello? So if you fellowship with the spirit of God, you're going to know the things of the spirit of God, of God, right? Now we have not received nor the not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. People get all discouraged and messed up. Man, I don't know what to do. Pray in the spirit for a while, man. Wait on God and let him bring it to you. And if it's not come yet, don't move without it. Because if you move in assumption, you're in trouble. And he always gives you confirmation. He'll give you confirmation through the office. Hallelujah. You want confirmation? Come on. <laughs> These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the carnal or the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. So who's trying to keep you in the natural realm? Amen. For they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Let me tell you something. You marry somebody that is not spirit-filled and you're on fire for God, you're going to have trouble. That's if you're on fire. That individual will either quench your fire or your fire will put them on fire. But I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I wouldn't get into a marriage saying, well, uh, I hope. <laughs> well, I uh, hope. You know what that means? You're unevenly yoked. you got no right to marry that individual. Even if they call themselves believers, you're still unevenly yoked. I know some of us have been married for a long time now and we got baptized in the Holy Spirit and our wives are seeking God. Whatever. That's cool. you you got to put up with it. <laughs> Paul said you can very well put up with it, right? Hallelujah. Oh man, don't be seeking a woman because she looks good. Let God bring her to you and you'll know her by her fruits. She better have fruits of the Spirit. Either that or she'll quench your fire. And you'll be in trouble. It's called unevenly yoked. And the Lord says, do not be unevenly yoked, even if they claim to be a believer. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody all right? Don't write me no letters, okay? <laughs> Seek the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Um, would you turn to the book of Jude? Book of Jude. Last book before uh, Revelation. Jude 14. Praise God. Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. Hallelujah. That's us. Amen. To execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way. And of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Woo-wee. These are grumblers, complainers, walking about 
according to their own laws. Believe me, some of these are believers. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lust. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. In other words, these are individuals not walking in the Spirit. They may have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they're choosing not to walk in the Spirit, and they cause divisions. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. How many of you all need to have faith? Amen. Praying in the what? The well, it says that faith pleases God, right? So we need to pray in the Holy Ghost. Keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. Making a distinction. But on others, save with what? Fear. Fear. You're going to hell, man. You better get saved, brother. <laughs> you better get baptized in the Holy Ghost, believer. So you can have power and dominion. <laughs> but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.